Hey all you scholars, it's Mikito here, and today we're going to be finishing chapter one of the uh, sorry, Fuseki Revolution book, uh, How AI Changed the Game, right? So today we're going to be looking at first the Kobayashi style. Um, this is the older Kobayashi style, which is this one here. Um, one, this is still played, you know, fairly recently today. I still find myself... Uh, in the amateur circuit, of course, around my level. But I do know that, you know, this book is all about showing how the older Fusekis are kind of out of practice or not being used by the pros of the computer, right? And there's a reason because AI changed the game. So let me just say that, um, you know, it's gonna be probably repeated a lot, but it's gonna be saying like, uh, AI broke this Fuseki, right? This opening pattern. Um, but I still personally, in my own games, live on Twitch, um, run into people playing this opening all the time. So this was particularly useful for me. Um, so when white backs off, then black plays seven, and this creates the old Kobayashi style. Uh, this pattern Kobayashi Koichi used when he was at his peak. Uh, the man won the Kisei title eight years in a row, the Meijin seven years in a row, and the Gosei title six years in a row. Um, that's, that's quite an accomplishment. Um, and so we're gonna look at his famous style, right? His opening. Um, so when we first play as white, you know, we're looking at these four moves. Uh, if we play a low approach, Black pincers with the two space high. This is actually the pincer that black uses even if white stand um, does a high approach. So it's pretty interesting that the answer is both like, hey, pincer the stone when it approaches, right? And um, in the past, you know, people studied with A and then black would then to hit this nice... Um, you know, what you might call a shoulder hit or armpit hit, but it was a really nice move to help you build this area. Once White's low approaches the pincer into an attack at four, um, this attack was considered very good for Black. Black builds on both sides, and White feels very claustrophobic, right? It already feels like it's a little hard to breathe here. Um, so let's go ahead and check if A doesn't feel right already. Let's check if we do a two-space jump. Well, if we do a two-space jump, now black can cut through. Black has the advantage in the fight because of its friend's stones, and so it pushes, you know, it pushes for this cut. It gets stronger by pulling back, and then when white pulls back to its stone, we cut here as black. Uh, if white tries to escape faster with a two-jump, black counters with... Um, you know, two and six. Black has friends in the area, which makes the fight very good for black. So this is, uh, you know, a good fight for black. White looks a little weak here and looks a little weak here. And black, you know, is white going to die? Maybe not here, but it sure feels like black's going to have an advantage attacking it. Um, so next we'll look at the diagonal here. So if we look at the diagonal, uh, so we looked at the one jump, we looked at the two jump. Now if we look at the diagonal, which is mainly used for splitting our opponents apart, um, black then just plays down here. If white tries to play slow and fight, black sweeps the leg, taking the base, and black has the advantage in the fight. So this was clearly good for black still, right? Because white can't make uh, like two eyes down here very easy, and so uh, white's going to be at a disadvantage. We're going to look at this at, uh, after a little bit. Hopefully I will remember and we won't mess up. So let's take a look at um, the one jump here. So this was the low approach. Now we're going to be looking at the high approach. Um, once again, as I said, we use that same pincer, which I do find very interesting. It's the same move. Um, in the past, we, you know, the pros thought that White would play something like this, and then black would jump down to make territory, and white would play something like this, and black would peep. 
and then black would finish um, with this number eight move. So if white plays high, black uses the same two space pincer. If white escapes or tries to escape with one jumps, black stays connected with the peep. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see black stones also have like some connection with this peep. <coughs> and then switches to the number eight stone. Uh, black is really good on both sides. And Kobayashi did very well with this opening, right? You've, you've seen all the titles he won. Um, and so this felt very unsatisfactory for white. Now, if we go back to this, in modern times, um, you know, A felt dissatisfactory, and B did too for the, the pros. But nowadays, in modern times, B is actually very nice. So I think this is kind of easy to find, right? You jump and then you play B. And so we'll see why this is okay. So black um, hanes, white pulls back, black dips down, and then white plays number nine. So let's read the script here. Uh, white one to three was used before, but now instead of playing A, right, uh, AI has shown us playing five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, is more useful. Nine in the past was considered too submissive, right? This looks pretty small and submissive. Um, but now the pros see this as white has settled in black's area. And so let's move on to the next part of the game, right? Um, so the idea is that if white is settled, then we can just move on to the rest of the game and not worry about it. And it kind of feels like a good reduction. So uh, that is one change the AI has made to this opening which is pretty easy to find, in my opinion. Uh, there is another, which is this move. So uh, I do think that this one is easier to find. It's probably the one I'll remember the most. Um, but this one is very unique to me um, because this far large knight looks like it can be cut pretty easy. Um, we're going to see how this works. Um, so first, black will, of course, Try and counterattack, right? Cut through. White Hane is very natural to uh, when you're attached to to counterattack. And then in this case, we see once Black got stronger and is splitting these groups, White now comes down to break the mouth shape, right? This is this is starting to form a mouth shape or a table shape, which Black does. He makes the table shape, um, but this is a nice vital point to break. This actually comes up in many shapes. Now white and double peeps and comes through and gives up two stones and just takes the corner. And this is a pretty big corner for white. Um, in the past, this large knight move was considered unplayable, right? Because black had all the advantage in the fights, right? And black had all the friends everywhere. But when the AI used this uh, seven double peep and nine to come take the corner, as white, this Joseki became a staple way to break up the Kobayashi opening. Uh, this is considered good for white. And when you look, yes, black has a nice thickness on the outside and two trash stones white had to give up, but this looks pretty small in comparison. Like these look pretty equal. So, and this was black's corner. Black had like, what, three stones here? Um, so for white to succeed so well, or I guess it was like more like two stones and a third one was added. But for white to succeed so well here, this is considered better for white. Um, so let's look at a third way. And we'll go all the way back to the first diagram that we looked at. Um, and so we now know that this has two ways to kind of break up this Kobayashi and put white in its favor. Um, but this way, the low approach also works. Now, before we said that this was too good, right? This feels really good for black. Um, white feels very claustrophobic. Um, in the past, we would never push to give black fourth line territory, right? This is usually given too much. But the AI, um, now mind you, the AI is a master at counting and um, judgment. Um, it says that it's okay to push on this fifth line, give black all this territory, and then come back and counterattack and make a base. 
Um, so looking at it, we'll look at it again. We we push, push, and then we um, pincer, and then we make a base. Um, pushing at five and seven, the fifth line pushing was considered bad fundamentals, right? It still feels bad to me naturally, but on the pro and AI level, it's not so bad in this case. It gave too much to black, but the AI disagreed, saying that the mark stone is now over concentrated. It's because this is too close to this, right? If you had this wall here or these line of stones, you wouldn't just one jump here next, right? <coughs> Um, and the counterattack with 9 and 11 feels playable. Uh, my personal feelings is this is really tough to handle. Um, but at pro levels, white is favored. And the Kobayashi opening was slain by the AI. Uh, another human Fuseki bites the dust. Uh, this is the end of the old Kobayashi. So um, remember, there's three ways to successfully break this up. But actually, um, I did play this a little out of order. We should look at C and D real quick. Um, these are the older styles. So in the past, when I was a kid, um, you know, before 2016, we w were told that A and B were bad, right? And we looked at why the humans thought it was bad. And then we looked at why the computer changed it and said, no, these are good. Um, so in, with these being bad, right, we were taught to play C and D against the Kobayashi. Um, but these aren't as satisfactory as playing A or B now. But let's take a look at the past ones so, you know, we can officially say we covered the Kobayashi. Um, so when we played this two space high, <coughs> excuse me, when we played this two space high, um, approach towards the corner. White would, or sorry, black would then go for taking the corner, right? And then white would stay ahead in the race, right? Very natural. Black is strong enough because he has this extra stone where he tanukis, which then puts a pressure on these this group. Um, white then says, well, if you're going to go this way, I'll go that way, right? And break up this area. But black can actually successfully take the area anyway. And when white jumps, black gets to um, threaten a cut. And then the, at the end, black then plays 14. And so uh, if white uses a two space high approach, black can use two to make the corner. And then as white tries to escape or get comfortable, right? You want to kind of at least make some eye shape or something with this group. Um, black develops on both sides very nicely. Uh, this was considered very good for black, especially after 14, right? If black's developing a nice corner side and black already has a nice, um, corner side, uh, this is already feeling pretty good for black. So this is, uh, an older style of playing. Um, and then of course this one. So once again, um, black takes the corner, right? So White makes a, a large knight two space um, approach and black plays immediately for the corner. Um, if white tries to just make a, a base, like a very small base, black can cramp this up. Now, once again, this is the old school style. So we're just uh, going over, you know, some good strategies in the past. Um, but black uh, does a checking extension. White jumps, we do a nice little tap. This is always good to use as a forcing move and then just leave it alone. Um, and then we play eight to finish the, the moyo on the bottom. If white picks the two space low approach, black takes the corner with two. This keeps pressure with four, right? Let's see here. And taps with six and then finishes with eight. Eight works really well with the two mark stones. And black is once again developing on both sides nicely, while white looks a little cramped. Um, so those were the past ones. Uh, what you should really take away is that A and B are the preferred moves if you want to break up the Kobayashi. Normally, I don't re repeat myself, but since I went a little out of order, um, we'll just quickly look over how to break this up. And so that way you can practice it without having to go back into the video each time. 
Um, so let's take a look at A real quick. So after black pincers with the two space, we jump. Black takes what looks like the best move. Black looks awesome. But then we're A-OK -okay to push, push, and then pincer, and then make a base. Now, mind you, like I said, my personal feelings, this would be hard for me to handle because white's not settled yet here, and white also has big weaknesses here. So this looks really hard. But at the pro and AI level, this is good enough to say black is inefficient, it's over-concentrated, and white got the better results. For us, I mean, for you, for you guys, I don't know what your rank you are. If you're high Don's watching this, maybe you can handle it better. But that one looks pretty tough to handle for me. Um, with B, with a high approach, this is the one that I'll personally be using in my games. Um, I wouldn't mind experimenting with both. Uh, B, I feel like a lot of things could misstep, right? Like a lot of things could end up differently. But it does seem pretty simple that if Black tries to cut you, you Hane, right? That's very natural. If Black's trying to make good shape, you break the good shape. That's very easy to find for me, too. And then same thing, right? You just peep and then cut and uh, sacrifice. And then there you go. You get yourself a nice juicy corner. So I like that. And finally, uh, this one is kind of one I, I played, actually. So a few days ago, I actually played somebody who played the Kobayashi against me. I didn't read the book at that time, and so... I didn't know how to handle it, but I came to something very similar to this, right? I actually attached here first and then like jumped out in a bad way, but um, this is very easy for me to find, I think. So you jump, you try and escape, black tries to save its territory, and then you attach under. And so now when black um, starts attacking you, you can just get this nice slide and feel good that, you know, white's pretty much alive and we can just go do something else now. Now, mind you, Black does get Sente out of this one. Um, but, yeah, that is it for the Kobayashi. Now we went really in-depth with that. Um, so let us move on to the new Kobayashi. So later in Kobayashi's career, um, he updated the Kobayashi style, right? So instead of playing um, at F3 first, he would make this small knight's move enclosure, right? And I, I'm sure I've played this plenty of times without even knowing it was the Kobayashi style. Um, and it's this idea that, uh, you know, uh, you, I mean, we can start from the beginning and you can see it, right? You just play, you play a 3-4, and then you make a small knight's enclosure. So you're trying to have territory while having quick development. It's really nice. Anyway. Let's get back onto the script. Uh, the new Kobayashi style. This was a newer model Kobayashi used to use. Once again, this opening was focused on speedy development. Um, in the past, white would play A. This is a very old school way of thinking. Like if you read the older Kisieto books, um, like the Direction of Play book by Kagewara, if I remember right, one of my students gave me the author's name yesterday. Um, you know, this style of, hey, black is building a wall here, so black wants to make points here, so we're going to play here immediately, right? This is um, a very classic way of uh, style. But nowadays, it's really old-fashioned. It's out of fashion. And mainly it's because black can just come in here and take away white stuff. We're actually going to see an older way of that happening, right? So black approaches on this side. To break a double wing, double wings used to be considered good. <coughs> white pincers, right? Because white has this power here. And black goes into the corner. And if black plays the old school way, you can see that after approach 10, this really looks small and cramped, and black's still developing really well. Um, white one, <laughs> I wrote, reeks of the old style of go. Um, black approaches on the other side that take and, and takes the corner. And black 10 makes a very strong development on both sides, right? Black got a corner, black gets another corner, and has a speedy development corner here. Um, Kobayashi won many games using both his old style and this new style. Um, now we don't use 8, that's a, the older Joseki. 
So if you guys don't know the modern Joseki, now we actually, after this poke here, or breaking of the tiger's mouth, we come down. And white can't follow us, or black will come out, which is too good for black. So now white blocks this way, and then we poke at the link, right? We say, hey, if you don't connect here, then I'm going to play d7, right? So white uh, tries to stay connected. We hane, white hanes, and now we actually leave this as is and then take the next move. Um, with the modern move of 1, 3, and 5, black takes sente and uses its speed to develop on the top. So this is also really good, right? We have one corner, a closure for a corner, and then another enclosure for a corner. Um, and this looks really small to me, right? This looks like very small. So um, this is really nice when we add the modern Joseki to Kobayashi style. Now this all relies, of course, if white plays the old school way. But people don't, at higher levels, really don't play this way anymore. Um, we've adapted to a lot of AI stuff. So let's look at the AI thinking. First, let's take a look at B here. Um, the more modern way to deal with this type of, uh, like if they build a wall type thing, is to just kind of first play this. And the idea is that, um, well, let me, let me read the script and then I'll give my thoughts. Uh, white now plays one. This move is considered by superior than playing A, B, or C for white. Uh, the AI has changed how people look at these five point uh, five space extensions, right? And the reason is is just like I mentioned, right? Once we play this long, you know, kind of move or any alternative of it, um, black can always just take the corner right away, and this area becomes very small and invadable. So nowadays, more modernly, you'll see players instead of making the five space extensions, they'll play star point enclosures. Um, and this is pretty good, right? But there's something even better. And that is because this is a small knight's move. If you guys remember from the first part of chapter one, we found many, many ways to make this very inefficient, right? And so in this case, as white, the best move is this move here. Now, if black plays A, which once again, um, I just want to mention from my personal experience, just a couple of days ago, my friend Terrence um, played this move against me, and we kind of played something very similar to this. Um, so people do play this. I'm more used to higher level players playing this, um, but I, I think this is actually the harder one to deal with for white. This one's really easy for white, and we'll see why. So with A, uh, white then plays Q2, and then black protects the corner. And then white now takes the good move, right? AI treats three, one and three as forcing moves and then plays the knight's move in closure, making this exchange first over concentrates black and then white takes the good move. So this is considered over concentrated for black, right? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so all of white's moves feel efficient. They don't feel overcrowded. They're all doing an, a very nice purpose. Black's move, Black feels like he's playing lots of moves for a very small area. So the idea of that we can just immediately touch small knight's moves and make them inefficient is really nice. And then you take the good move, right? You don't make the five space extension, you just take the good move. Um, so either of these are pretty good, but C I think is better than anything else. So now let's look at this one. This is the more common one I think you'll face in your games um, where black Kanes, right? Somebody touches your stone. It makes sense to counterattack them. Um, white pulls back. Black has two options. Um, let's look at this one first. Uh, and then white takes the star point. So white kind of builds a base here. Uh, white one makes black heavy. The mark stone is over concentrated and white settles easy. A is hard to invade for black, and if black plays B instead of 2, so I'll, I'll bring that up after, but it's saying that um, you can clearly see this looks super over-concentrated, right? If you have these three stones here, your next move wouldn't be to play R5. That would be awful, right? So this is a really bad situation for black, 
and it immediately comes to once white attaches to the small knight's move. Um, a is invadable. The book says that, it, you know, um, it would be hard to invade here. And I guess, you know, white can push up and try and connect over. Um, it looks a little difficult for me to handle when black plays here. Um, I remember in the game I played against Terrence, we played the 1-3 exchange here. And then when he invaded, I kind of just let those stones go and took like the bigger bigger portion of the board. But um, anyway, that's what the book states. Um, going back though, this is definitely over-concentrated for black. And I almost never see anybody play A. It's referenced a lot in this book. Um, I think it was referenced a lot in the first chapter, if you guys remember. But A looks really weird to me. I see everyone play this. Um, but this is even better for white in a way because the other one to me, a, that A invasion is left for later. But in this one, we just settle really quickly, right? So black under or sweeps the leg, undercuts white, and then white gets to push and then get to jump, right? And so this is actually easier for white. Um, you look like, to me, it looks like white's much more settled and it's much harder to invade in here. Um, black is considered over concentrated once again and white once again feels good. So we are looking pretty good and it all stems down to this. And so we can see, I wanna just see if I, yeah, so I gotta remember to do D. Um, but we can see that uh, if black makes a three, four point and then encloses it with a, a small knight's move, then we can really make black heavy or inefficient and we can play get quite an early advantage. So this is really nice to keep in mind. It's also nice if you're an old school player like me. Um, for me, I stopped in 2016 for like almost four years. I did play a little bit in 2018, but I didn't start updating to the AI stuff until 2020. So it was four years of AI development and study. And I remember in the Inseong League for the Yeonggunsei Do Jang, um, I used to play this old school way and immediately all the players capitalized and, you know, I got, I, I got some hard knock lessons. Um, but, uh, and decided to rant or, you know, tangent there. But what I was going to say is if you're an old school player who hasn't like studied any of the AI stuff, um, and you still play moves like this, um, you know, hopefully this video is helping you out, right? Hopefully this is updating your knowledge quite a bit. So finally, uh, white can also approach this way first. If black comes down, white can make this really old school style five space extension, which we just talked about kind of varying away from. Um, but uh, this is kind of for an example purpose because if black plays here and then gets this development um, against the new Kobayashi opening, uh, white doesn't even need to play the bottom, right? Um, white could play uh, one for a nice 3D shape, right? This is a three-dimensional development. Um, in the past, black's position was considered ideal, and it was good to disrupt or prevent black from getting this. But now, so funny enough, I did this uh, class live yesterday, and uh, I think I forgot this variation. I could be wrong, but I think I forgot this. Um, white can just play here. So if you guys remember from the uh, last chapter, the small knight's move really kind of has two weaknesses, right? The attachment on front and then the shoulder head here. Because the small knight is low, it allows white to play one, a shoulder head. This hit causes black to be over-concentrated. So now it's more popular to use the two-space high pincer. The new Kobayashi has been defeated. It's very possible I showed this on stream, but I feel like I didn't, so... Hopefully you're getting some bonus content here in the, the YouTube version. Um, but yes, so this is, even if black gets like the perfect ideal shape, right? This is usually what black wants. Um, it can kind of be squandered with this move, right? It, black's not going to make a lot of territory um, on either side of this, this shoulder hit. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, you could argue that black makes a lot on the bottom, but uh <laughs> you know this is the information i got so i would much rather prefer to play p3 guys so 
um, you know, I give you guys my personal take or bias on it. Um, but yeah, I'd rather nip the, that shape in the bud and just play here immediately. Um, and if I was feeling very um, conservative, I'd play this. But anyway, that is everything that handles the new Kobayashi. Um, small nights happen all the time in amateur games. And uh, so I think this information is useful for you, not only when somebody is playing a very specific opening, but just in general. Uh, so now we're going to the 3-4 opening. This is the double 3-4s. Um, this is still a course played. I used to play this all the time. This was my favorite opening, I remember, for 2016. Um, so black makes a small knight's enclosure. And then white approaches. Uh, the small knight, the small knight enclosure plus the 3-4. This opening aims for early profit, right? We're trying to get early profit. Um, and it's still played today by pros, but not as often as before. So black would now attach under white. And I think we're all very familiar with the start of this Joseki. The difference is the book talks about this one exclusively um, because it's an older Joseki that got phased out by the AI. Um, unfortunately, the book doesn't tell us exactly why, in, in this particular case, um, why this move is better than this one. Um, but somebody in my comments when I live stream this uh, mentioned that at this point, black can tanuki. Um, so black doesn't need to play O3. Um, it wasn't explained further than that, so that's the information I have now. But yeah, apparently black can tanuki here now, and so that's why this kind of phased out already. But in the book, they continue with this move, and then white plays. Well, we can kind of already see what the good move is, but let's look at the old school way. So this used to be the old school way where we would make a three space extension or a base, and then black would check extend. Excuse me. <coughs> this target's mouth was played for a long time before AI pros were uh, experimenting with changing seven to the B marker, right, where we had B before. Um, so this is considered pretty good for black, and, you know, white has some weakness, right? So this was considered good for black. Black develops on both sides. So now they were saying even before AI, white pros, um, the pros were already experimenting with this attachment. Um, I think we're very familiar with this now. If we play A... White pushes and then settles. Excuse me. White settles easy and stops black's checking extension. This is considered good for white and not so bad for black. Yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good for white in my opinion. And it also doesn't look too bad for black, although this is always considered over-concentrated these days. Um, so this was really easy for white. Uh, if black plays here... White then comes back to play this one. We saw this one as well. This move at four was considered to be over-concentrated. Um, the author notes this attachment was invented by humans, and it was already making this opening unpopular, this 3-4 opening unpopular. Um, but the AI confirmed it. So there's that. Uh, so let us see if I missed anything. I think this was, yeah, my own input that um, nowadays we see Q6 more because, uh, like I said, my viewers told me that Q7 is, tanu you know, black and tanuki. So, whereas this one, black can't tanuki, right? Black will have some trouble. Um, so, is that it? There's more there. I think there's more. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there was one other thing, and sorry that I'm jumping around. There was one thing I didn't explain. Um, so we looked at A, the Kobay the old Kobayashi style, and we looked at B, the modern Kobayashi style, and now uh, I just wanted to say that this move is considered better than using both of those Kobayashi styles. Um, it's this two-space high pincer, right? Because it can't be pushed down... Um, or made over concentrated very easy. 
So that's why this is considered uh, better than both of the Kobayashi styles. So uh, sorry I missed that. Um, finally, uh, this is, I think, the last part of it. We can look at the low approach. So we looked at the high approach. This is the approach I kind of always use for this opening. It's very simple. If you guys notice one thing about me is I try and play the most simplest things, right? Um, but yeah, so when black attack, oh, sorry. Let's go down to the low approach. So, um, when black pincers, um, this used to be considered really good. If white played one, black two is considered a very nice pincer. But AI found a way to retaliate, though. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, uh, this is, I think, very difficult. So it's not, you know, this is just my bias, but I would rather play the high approach. Um, but if you guys like complicated stuff, if you like learning things and tricking up your opponent, um, you can attempt to learn this, but uh, I do think this is much harder to pull off than what we saw previously. So, um, instead of jumping or doing, you know, attaching under or anything, white presses down on black. Now, the book only shows B, um, which is disappointing. So, I had to do a little of my own research about A, um, because I'm sure more players now will play A than B when it comes to this opening. I'm like, at least in my experience, that's been the truth. So you know, I was a little sad that uh, the book didn't cover A, but let's look at B. Um, so we push, black jumps, we um, shoulder hit, right? So the idea is that uh, we push black down, right? So we've pushed black down, and now we make sure once again to push black down. We know the small knight's weaknesses is the attachment and the shoulder hit. And we can see that black is building kind of a, a potentially big moyo here that could stretch out to a 3D shape. So that's why white immediately presses down black. After six, we jump at seven. White uses the pressing move and forces forcing moves of one through seven. This is considered bad for black and good for white. Black is low on both sides. The book doesn't cover if black counters at Q4. So uh, I use the Joseki button. If you guys don't know how useful this is, it's very useful. Um, Joseki button here on OGS, um, and it looks very complicated. So let's take a look. So this is very simple. Um, I still feel a little awkward because white doesn't feel settled here yet. Um, but you can see that black moves are very over-concentrated, right? This feels over-concentrated. This feels really low. Um, and so it definitely does look better for white, but it looks pretty hard to handle too, in my opinion. Uh, of course, my opinion's from a 1Q level, so... And definitely, there's a lot of people that I'm sure that would disagree even at 1Q level, right? But I, it looks tough for me. So uh, let's take a look at this Joseki. So what happens if black doesn't want to submit, right? When wants to fight. Well, here's what I got from the Joseki uh, button. Um, white moves to the side, right? We're creating like a pinwheel, right? This is a cross cut. We're stopping black from getting us in a ladder. And then, well, black doesn't want to be in a ladder. And so now we have to, a pinwheel going. Um, white hits the vital point here. Black then also does the same. White pushes down. Black now comes back to attach. Th these are some of the moves that I would find really hard. Um, white pulls back. Black then breaks the shape, um, kind of hitting like a vital point so that it's hard for white to kind of move. Um, white then takes the black stone, of course. Black, um, I guess, clamps this stone, right? Because then that would give black life in one turn. So white has to answer. And now black switches out to this side. White pawn comes down, which I believe just straight up kills all these stones. And then black uh, hits the angle Tetsuji. White ha is kind of like in a um, is in a like liberty race, and so white just nips that in the bud, and then black gets all the outside, and white gets sente. 
Um, this was labeled a traditional joseki. So that was some of my disappointment because I couldn't find like an, an AI style, but this is considered an old school joseki. Um, white gets the corner and black gets the side. White gets sente. Um, to prevent, <laughs> to prevent this, use the diagonal instead of the pincer. Let's see. So let's take a look. But um, ideally, if you, you're black and you don't like that white got your full corner, then you can use the diagonal instead. Um, if you do like this Moyo outside game, then you know you can play this way. But it looks pretty hard because white gets sente, and so... You know, let's say let's add the the M, um, the modern style to it, right? If white can live here very easily, black's really not going to make a lot of points, no, right? So, I think this would be good for white. Um, so instead of pincering here at two, we can then use B, and I think this is like an easier style for black as well. So for the easy way for white. Um, the easy way for white is not to play the low move. I think it's to play the high move. And if white plays low, the easy way for black is the B move, not the pincer. Although, you guys can play anything you want. Um, <laughs> I think at our, at least my amateur level, no matter which ones you choose, even if you have a slight advantage in the opening, you can still lose the game pretty big in the middle game, right? So... All right, so let's look at B. Um, so the it's on like the Shusaku diagonal, right? This is really nice. White makes a base, then black pincers, right? Uh, checking extension. White can then play this move, and once again, we are looking at white making this group um, inefficient, and. White is just okay, right? I I think in this case, I think black is all right, and I think white is good too. Um, and so it for me, this looks very even. Guys, uh, this is the end of chapter one. Next week, we'll be going over chapter two. I'm very excited to go through this because I've never finished this book. And um, some of my friends who watched the first video said they actually went out and purchased it. So let me just... Oops. Let me just I iterate that uh, I do support the book, and I hope you guys uh, consider getting it. Uh, it's good to watch the videos, and it's good to read the book, and then it's good to practice these out with your like morning tea or coffee, right? That's the best way to learn really anything in Go, in my opinion, is generally repetition. You know, getting different forms of watching, reading, playing. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to end it here, and I hope you guys have an awesome day or evening, and uh, you know I'll be back next week with uh, Chapter 2. Take it easy.